What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing my first speed art video where I take you guys through my entire design process from start to finish for creating a mascot type logo design. Now, a few people out there have asked me if I can show them how to create a logo like this for a while, um, but I didn't want to put out a video that's you know two hours long or anything like that. So that's why I decided to do a speed art video. But what will make it different is that I'm actually going to be doing commentary throughout the entire thing so that I can show you guys what I'm doing and why. To start things off, I scanned in my Rhino sketch, which I brought into Photoshop. And I just cleaned it up a bit to get a little bit more contrast out of it before bringing it into Adobe Illustrator. Uh, from there I set up my layers, just put the sketch on its own layer with a solid white layer on top of it and then I turned the opacity down a little bit to kind of make the lines a little bit more faint on my sketch. And then I just grabbed my pen tool and began tracing the outer shape um, of this rhino slash you know mascot creature looking thing uh, that I wanted to create. And then I just began tracing the inner shapes, you know, the ears, and you know, using the pen tool to try and create these uh, lines that had some good contrast between the thicks and thins. Um, you want to pay attention to the points and how you can use some of these smaller shapes to uh, indicate your your shading. And you know, uh, these are the areas that we're going to be kind of filling with color later on. But whenever I'm doing these kind of things, I usually like to start with the big shapes and then gradually work towards getting smaller and smaller areas. Um, so far I haven't really zoomed in too much, but you you know, as you begin to work, there I go, I'm zooming in a little bit now. Um, it can be really helpful just to get some of those fine points. Now I know, you know, this logo is not, you know, totally symmetrical and, and that's fine because uh, I think asymmetry can be a little bit more interesting sometimes. And it, you know, it's just nice to add a little bit of variation. So. All I'm doing is just continuing to use the pen and trace over the shapes that I created with my sketch. Um, and you know, for the sketch, it can be it can be a little bit loose. It doesn't have to be a super tight sketch because you want to leave a little bit of room for uh, for variation. You know, in case you change your mind or anything later. Um, but some of these shapes that I'm I'm creating, I am actually using the Pathfinder to unite them. The goal is that you know, once we have all of these black shapes. Um, we can use the Pathfinder to uh, merge them together so that it's basically just one uh, one layer, one giant uh, block of shapes together. And here what I'm doing is grabbing the horn and kind of knocking it out of the shapes behind it. Again, just using the Pathfinder tool. Uh, the Pathfinder is super helpful with, with this kind of stuff when you're doing logos or illustrations. Uh, could be, you know, poster design or t-shirt graphics or anything like that. And then, uh, you know, I'm just kind of going back in zooming in and adding some more of these black points. Um, going in, putting in the eyes, filling them with white, and adding a little bit of detail to the horn. I think the first time I did this, I was gonna shade it using the blend tool, um, but I didn't like the way that that really looked, uh, you know, so I just ended up, I think, removing that. But, you know, these, these kind of logos can be, can be really fun to work on, so, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time on the sketching phase, but once I got in here and began uh, working in Illustrator, it really kind of picked up. All right, now I'm kind of using the Pathfinder, doing a select all and merging all of my black shapes and putting them on a layer um, and doing the same with the white. So the white is basically just a flat layer behind uh, all of the black. And I'm just kind of adding more, a little bit more variation and uh, you know, trying to be a little bit more interesting in terms of the line weight. You know, you don't want all the lines to look equal in weight. Um, so I'm kind of going back in and then merging that with my black layer along the way. All right, I spent a little bit of time just going in and taking a look at some color palettes here, uh, which I love doing on this Adobe Color CC. Uh, you can always get some cool and interesting palettes there. Um, I knew that I wanted to go for this kind of like blue, gray, and green color scheme, uh, so I kind of looked for, for something that would work with that. Um, but here I've just put in 
you know, that solid layer of color in the background and I'm playing around sampling different blues and seeing what those look like. So I basically have my flat blue color and now instead of using black, I've just used that bluish gray uh, color that's a little bit darker. Now this is kind of where it starts to get a little bit more fun because I'm basically now doing the shading and the highlights, which I didn't really have figured out in my sketch. So that's what I meant when I was saying you want to leave a little bit of room for uh, you know, interpretation, variation, and just experimentation as well. What I've done though is I'm creating these shapes and then you know, sampling one of the blue colors and changing the blending mode to multiply uh, for the shadows and then just reducing the opacity of them to about 50%. And, you know, I tried to make a lot of these shapes look kind of random or uh, organic. You know, they do follow the lines for the most part, but um, I didn't want them to be, you know, to follow the shapes exactly. You may also want to experiment with some gradients in there as well, instead of just doing flat colors. I did try to do that on the ears a little bit, just to make it a little more interesting and to get kind of a gradual fade instead of just having a solid shape of, of color. And I think I might have done that in one other area a little bit later on, maybe on the, the nostrils, on the nose, or below them. Um, but again, I'm just kind of going back in and repeating the same steps here. So this is kind of the next phase uh, where I'm doing the shadows and experimenting with the colors and the blending modes, as well as uh, flat colors versus gradients. Once you're happy with the shadows, you can move on to the next part where we're going to put in the highlights. Now the highlights are you know, going to be a lighter blue here. I, I didn't use a solid white for the highlights, but I used uh, one of my lighter blue colors. And these um, highlight layers, I like to keep below my main uh, areas of dark color, like that darkest blue, um, the, sh the highlights will be just below that and then the shadows will be below the highlights. So you can kind of see the, the palette on the side, you can get a sense of how I'm organizing my layers and what the layer stack looks like. And I'm doing a lot of the same thing, just trying to create these random shapes that loosely follow the forms that we've already established. I know there's, you know, speed art videos out there that show you guys how to do this kind of stuff, but a lot of them are not narrated. You don't usually get the play-by-play the -play like I'm trying to give you guys here just to explain um, actually what's happening uh, to try and make it a little bit easier. I was going to leave this at the normal speed but the video would have been close to an hour and you know I don't like to make videos super long. I do have a couple of longer videos but I feel like anything over 40-45 minutes is getting to be a little, a little too much so I uh, wanted to just keep it a little bit more brief than that, but still show you guys my whole process for how I created this. Maybe in another video I can spend a little bit more time on the sketching phase if that's something that you guys would be interested in, but today uh, the focus was just on building this uh, using the sketch as a base in Illustrator. Um, you know, but let me know if you guys like this kind of stuff. I can certainly do more speed art videos where I narrate it and explain it and, and try to help you understand uh, my process as I'm creating these kind of things. So we're just continuing to build on uh, on top of our, our highlights here and follow the forms, playing around with the colors a little bit, and then I'm going to try and merge this all together. Right, getting rid of any extraneous or unnecessary points. And then I basically selected the whole shape and merged it to make it one. Uh, then I played around with the offset option that allowed me to create an outline around the, the whole shape itself. So do you remember when we first began and I was tracing the outer edge? Well, that's what you can use to create your, uh, your stroke later on. And you know, it's really jumping back and forth between the pen, the pathfinder, the offset, and a few other key elements here. Um, but now I'm kind of, again, playing with the thickness of that outline around the edge, changing the eye color, and experimenting with background colors as well to see what's going to complement our logo the most. So it is handy to have those color palettes that I have there in the document. Uh, you may, you know, kind of go off, off the course a little bit. You don't have to follow them exactly, but um, it can be helpful to have a few colors to play around with and, and choose from. Um, but here I was just kind of experimenting with trying to start to build a container or a shape 
um, and putting the, the team name in here that I just made up. It's not a real team at all. But it could be, you know, why not? So yeah, I'm using this, uh, this triangle, kind of having it go downward since the horn points up. I thought it might be nice to have something going the opposite way to keep things balanced. Um, you know, and I'm starting to find a couple of typefaces that I like here that I want to use, which, you know, you can do that beforehand, but sometimes it's nice to have your illustration or your logo first and then try and find a good complementary typeface that will work with your design. Um, here we're just kind of sticking with the same color family, the grays and blues. A little bit of green here and there just for uh, for some extra contrast and excitement. And now what I'm doing is uh, I actually changed this font, this live font, to outlines so that I could modify it a little bit. Right? I'm just using the direct selection tool and playing around with some of the points. Uh, created this shape here, these triangles on the end, just to kind of uh, complement the horns and then merging them so that the whole black shape is, is one. And then I'm creating this white shape and knocking it out and moving the letters closer together. All right, again, I picked a solid fill and I did an offset to get that stroke. And then I picked my, you know, I picked a green for the inside color, copied and pasted it in front, and then knocked the, the front color out of it. So that's kind of how you get that highlight uh, looking effect there, which I have covered in uh, one of my other videos too. I can put a link for that if you guys want to see how I'm doing that in a little bit more detail. So at this point, it's coming along, you know, the, the tricky part here is kind of establishing, um, you know, colors for the different parts of the text and still making it feel unified within the rest of the design. Um, so I'm trying to use most of the colors that I already have um, in my main illustration, but also just trying to find something that, that will feel balanced. All right, and I'm experimenting with the scale of the type and the placement of it. Should it go in the back? Should it go in the front? Um, you know, maybe you want to do an envelope distort to try and get that kind of arc or warp it a little bit. Um, it's really just kind of playing around and seeing what works and, you know, trying to strike a balance between all this stuff. That's really important, especially with, uh, with this type of logo design. Ultimately, I decided that putting the text above the mascot would look best. Um, and then I just recreated the triangle so that I could have this white outline go around the entire shape. So now I'm kind of moving the text down into the shape a little bit to marry the two together, breaking the lines and kind of using that green uh, just to direct your eye and, and, you know, kind of wrap everything up nicely. Right there, I'm just scaling things, making sure that, uh, you know, all my shapes are merged and, and trying to keep things clean as you work. Um, again, using the Pathfinder tool. And at this point, I think that I wanted to, you know, add just a little bit something extra to it. So I was playing around with the background a little bit more and I decided that I wanted to bring in some textures. So I've got a pretty good library going of, of just vector textures that I use in some of my artwork. Um, a lot of the stuff that I use, I've grabbed off of my deposit photos account, which I have a stock photos account. I highly recommend it if you guys are doing a lot of, you know, client work or freelance stuff, personal work. Um, it can really be a great way, a great time saver to, uh, to use. You could always obviously create textures from your own photos, it'll just take you a little more time. Um, but again, for me I wanted to be able to do something relatively quick and kind of just explain to you guys my process for how I did this. So I'm bringing in the texture uh, using a mask, an opacity mask to confine it to our document size and then I'm just lowering the opacity of it a little bit. At this point, you know, it's pretty much there. So again, this is, you know, a, a lo mascot logo tutorial that shows you guys my process, taking it from a hand-drawn sketch, uh, cleaning up the sketch a little bit in Photoshop, and then using it as a base to create a more involved and complex looking logo in Illustrator. So from start to finish, I just wanted to take you guys through this. It seemed like something uh, that some of you guys were interested in seeing. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time.